everybody I thought I would quickly try and edit this video and get it out to you I was just playing the other day um, I have some paper paper glaze from Picket Fence Studios and I wanted to give it a try on the gel plate I know that's not what it's meant for but honestly if I get a new product like I want to try it on the gel plate <laughs> I want to see if it'll work. So, um, some of the results are nice and some of it is just, eh, whatever. But the whole idea was to experiment and to find it for myself what it was like. So I have about maybe a dozen colors and they are very pretty and very shimmery without having glitter. I don't mind shimmer. Like it has a very pearlescent look, but I do not like glitter. And this is not glittery. So it's very nice. It's very creamy. Like the texture is really nice and easy to work with. So you see there, I just mixed a couple colors and I was just creating a background. So now I thought I would try to spread some through a stencil. And I used a palette knife all while using the paper glaze because I didn't want to get it on my brayer and I don't think it would actually work all that well with a brayer, but the palette knife seemed to work out just fine. So again, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just playing and experimenting and seeing if anything nice comes out of it. There are beautiful colors though. So you can see the pearlescent sheen on that. So I don't know, like when doing these prints, I don't think I would do a print using all paper glaze, um, but I can see how if you had a gel print background and you wanted to add a little bit more, I think it could be a really nice layer among the paint layers. I think that's where it would really look good. So the plan for this one is to let it dry. And I don't know why my lighting changed. I don't know if the sun went behind clouds or what it was, but I've noticed lately when I'm editing my videos, my lighting has been getting really weird. So I do apologize for that. Now I'm not positive if I have all the colors correct that I used in this video, but I just thought I would grab them and name it the colors that I think I used in this video. Um, the one I'm using, the green there, that one is Lime Zinnia. I could be pronouncing that wrong. And I'll tell you all the teal, turquoise, green colors I have because of course they're gorgeous. Um, there's leaf green, succulent green, jade vine, and ocean poppy. Those are all beautiful. That one there that I used with the lime, that one is the succulent green. It's beautiful. And then there's a nice soft pink carnation. Mint Hydrangea, that is beautiful too. It is very light. And then another light one is Yellow Primrose. And then a nice bright yellow is Daffodil Yellow. I do have more colors besides that, but I didn't use them in this video. Like for instance, there is a purple. <laughs> that one didn't get used. I don't know why. Can you believe it? <laughs> Um, there's a snowdrop white too. 
there's tons of colors. Just go on their website, Picket Fence Studios, and you can see all the colors they have. So all that talking, I totally missed what I was doing. Um, I just spread out some paper glaze and then I stamped into it with some rubber stamps. And I have a container of water next to me while I'm doing this. So when I'm done with the stencils, I put it in the water. And when I'm done with the stamps, I put them in there because I don't want it to dry on. I don't think these are as bad as what um, modeling paste would be like because the modeling paste, when it dries, you would get that hard texture that would be left on your stencils and stamps. This, I don't think, is quite as bad, but I still, I, I don't want it. The stencils, I wouldn't be as worried about, but I definitely don't want it drying on my stamps. This stuff is pretty thin, but I think it's just safer to clean it off. That one that I did with the stamps, I really loved the second pull that I got from that. Probably because it's a little bit more grungy looking. <laughs> so here I'm just getting rid, rid of the um, paper glaze that's in the circle area. Same idea of a technique that I would do with paint. I'm just trying it with the paper glaze. I love that succulent green. So I thought while the paper glaze is wet, I would try stamping into it for a little extra design. <laughs> These stamps that I'm using, by the way, are, are by Marlene stamps. They're old ones and I really, I don't know if they're available anymore, especially the my favorite one, the one with all the circles and the numbers and that in it. That one is amazing. And I think that one must have sold out close to when she put it out because people have been having a hard time finding it forever. See, it's nothing spectacular, but you do get some cool texture from it. So depending on what you're looking for, I just thought I would show you and you guys can figure out for yourselves if it's something you like or maybe it'll spark some ideas for some products you have at home already or maybe you'll come up with some other ideas for it but again all of these I really like the second print more than I like the first probably because of that imperfection and the little bit of I don't know it just looks a little more grungy and worn I think that one might be the snowball white. This is a tool that's actually used for baking. <laughs> I got it at Michael's in the baking area. And I bought it for this purpose. So at this point, I thought I would add some paint to the mix instead of using all paper glaze. So I'm just going in with some white paint to pull what's on the gel plate. So here, yes, I do use a brayer, but I'm using it with paint. And that's the stamp by Art by Marlene that I just love. I know it's light, but I still think it's pretty cool. And I can see that being a really nice layer on top of some like already done paint backgrounds. I 
I think this is the one I end up loving. And this was just getting rid of what was on my plate. Yeah, I love the combo of the colors together. So then I thought because I like that so much that I would try going in like because I really like the contrast of the blue with that I gotta check see what that color is it's called yellow oxide I really love the combo like I didn't want a lot of the blue I just wanted like pecks of it but I wanted it to be like grungy and not clean lines <laughs> See, that was the only time I tried using a brayer, and I took a brayer that I didn't really care about, and I didn't like it. So, again, I go back with my palette knife. Just make sure, like, the reason why I've changed palette knives is there had been something dried on the other one, and it was causing lines when I was spreading out the paste. I mean, you can clean it off later, but I didn't want to stop in the middle of playing to clean it. So I've grabbed a stencil by Rebecca Meyer. It's the Crafters Workshop. And this one's Distress Lace. I always love this stencil. It's just, it's beautiful. And it's almost like the perfect stencil for grungy but feminine and elegant <laughs> I don't know it's just it's a beautiful stencil Rebecca Meyer has quite a lot of stencils that are beautiful and can look a little distressed at the same time so I'm just getting rid of a little bit of that paper glaze because like I said I didn't want too much blue in the background and now I'm going to take that one and put it aside so it can dry. And I'm bringing back the one that I put aside earlier. So it should be good and dry by now. And <laughs> this probably would have been really nice, but the color choice I made and the paint that I chose to pull this print, it was... It was awful. I could tell as soon as I brayered it onto the gel plate that it was going to be nasty. And it really was. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember if this one came out okay or not. It always feels like forever watching me rub the paper. That's not too bad. I like parts of it. Again, back with that beautiful stamp. I think this one is just way more paint than it is any paper glaze. Oh, 
as little bits. Again, I don't think I would use these pieces as a whole, but I could see like tearing bits off of it for like layered collage or just making little embellishments. That's a texture plate from Carabelle Studio, abstract flowers. And really this one just comes out like a basic, one of the first things you would learn to do kind of prints. <laughs> I think basically I'm just trying to clean my plate. I forgot we still have that other one that we put aside. Just making sure all the paint is off my brayer before I go in with the yellow oxide. nice but it's still not as great as that unintentional one that I did in the beginning. I don't know if this one I like more. First when I was pulling the paper up I could see it was ripping and that's why I abandoned <laughs> the bottom and I went to the top so I could pull the opposite way and then the paper came with the rest of it. So that is it for my prints so I'm just going to show you again how they all turned out. Um, I hope this experimenting gave you some ideas or maybe you'll look at it and be like, yeah, I got to get some paper glaze. <laughs> or maybe you'll think of how to use some things that you already have at home. So I hope you enjoyed the video either way and have a great weekend. Bye. Thanks so much for stopping by. Let me know if you like my videos by leaving me a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also head over to my Instagram account and say hi to me over there. If you have any video requests, leave a comment down below and I'll see what I can do. And don't forget to check out my other videos.